Hello, and again, welcome to BitDev. I'm Santiago Ramones. Across from me is... I'm Tyler Thomas. How you been? I've been great, man. Thanks for having me on. I've been listening to your podcasts for a while, and I was like, you know, I actually was like, man, it would be so cool to be on this, like, <laughs> like because I had heard, like, all these other people on there. I was like, dude, this is so cool that you're, like, doing this, and I don't know. I was, like, super excited when you asked me to come on, so thanks. So, uh... This isn't just me like trying to flatter you, but you were like one of the first people that I thought of whenever I was like, you know who would be interesting on the podcast? <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> okay. Wow. Thanks, man. Yeah. Because um, I really, I love how you look at music. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I try, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll talk about that. So cool. first of all, uh, who are you? What do you do? All right. So... My name is Tyler Thomas. I uh, grew up in Oklahoma City, and I went to uh, Hefner Middle School, Putnam City North High School, and then I just graduated from UCO with a jazz performance degree. And I, that was last December, or like I guess this December, and just in like a short you know month span, I got a cruise ship job. So I'm super excited about it. And yeah, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. My usual kind of first thing is, uh, how did you get started doing music? Well, um, let's see. I think when I was like five or six years old, I started doing piano. And, you know, I did piano lessons for a little bit. And I, I liked it. I, I should have practiced more. I, I didn't have a piano either. So I really didn't, you know, I didn't have a keyboard or anything. So <laughs> I would just go and play piano when I was at the person's house. Yeah. And I think actually before that, my mom put me in like... I don't know if it was kinder music, but it was like a little music class with like mm. a bunch of like really small like toddlers and I was a toddler and I think that was <laughs> kind of cool too. So I, maybe that helped. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah. And then I, the main reason I started was just through band in like sixth grade. I just through the school program and mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. <laughs> um, when did you realize that music was what you had to do? <laughs> Um, I think I'd say probably like it really like was something like I wanted to do was probably like in eighth grade because eighth grade was when I really started finding like, like all these jazz recordings. And that's when I started listening to jazz a lot was in eighth grade. Before mm -hmm. then, I'd been listening to like pretty much just like, you know, whatever metal or rock or rap or hip hop or just, and mm -hmm. you know, I like, I appreciate those too. But like, I don't know when I heard jazz, I was just like, man, this is like this is awesome. Like I gotta, <laughs> you know, I gotta play like this. I want to do this. So, mm. you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how did your parents feel about the, like, Hey, I'm going to do music. <laughs> you know, actually I think they were, you know, I think obviously they were a little worried and you know, they, neither one of them, I mean, my dad was musical. He was like in a band, but it wasn't his like full time job or right, anything. Right. He, you know, and, so they were kind of worried a little bit and I think they, but they were pretty supportive. I mean, they never like doubted me or they weren't like, I think my grandparents were more that way. They were kind of like, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. And, but my parents, they were always like super supportive and they were like, mm -hmm. never, I mean, they were, they never like questioned me and if that's what I wanted to do, that's what I wanted to do, you know? So yeah, they were really helpful with that. <laughs> so I really appreciate that too. So. What all instruments do you play? Uh, <laughs> well, mainly I just play trombone, but I mean, I guess I'm, I, I mean, I know piano and I, I've played tuba. A tuba is my, probably my next most comfortable mm. instrument. I, I played tuba a lot and then, uh, I can play like euphonium or baritone and then mm. I can play trumpet. I can't really read trumpet music, but I can play trumpet <laughs> and I've, I got to do like some classes with like the woodwind stuff, but I, I mean, mm. I, I could make sounds on them, but I can't, you know, right. I can't really play them. So you played yeah. drums for a while there. Oh yeah. And I did drums, but you <laughs> yeah. know, like. I, I don't know. I mean, it was really fun, and I think I learned some stuff, definitely, but I don't play them regular, regularly, which I should. I should really, like, get get that down because it's important to, like, for time and just knowing a jazz beat or, you know, a mm -hmm. basic swing pattern is, like, super important. So, <laughs> And same with piano. If I learned piano more, I mean, it, it would just help in general with just being, you know, a musician. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, what were you listening to that got you into jazz and like blew your mind you know it's funny is like the first recording well actually how it happened was i had an ipod and it was like a, one of those bigger 
you know, old yeah, school yeah. iPods. And my uncle, he just like totally gave me all his music. Like he was just like, here, I have like a terabyte of music. Just have it all. <laughs> and so like, he, I just had all these artists and I was just like, you know, on the bus rides or whatever, I was just going through it and looking through all the artists. And I found there was a Charlie Parker and I, I didn't know who Charlie Parker was at the time. I, I just like mm. clicked on his name and I was like, man, this guy. And I was like, it had a bunch of his like songs on there and his tunes and his like arrangements or whatever. And, and I was like, man, this is great. And so I just like started listening to Charlie Parker and then from there, you know, I found out, oh, Dizzy Gillespie, he played with Dizzy Gillespie. And then I started listening to Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> and, you know, from there, I just started listening to, like, everything. Down I the could. rabbit hole. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I was super lucky to find Charlie Parker on my iPod. <laughs> uh, do you have, like, a favorite or a hero or whatever that... Oh, uh, man, that's tough. But honestly, I want to, like, say... You know, since I play trombone, that my hero is like a trombonist, which there are a ton of trombonists that I really love. But like, I think one of my favorite persons, like if I could see them live, would be like Dexter Gordon. Like, I, I don't know, I just really love Dexter Gordon and his playing. And, I don't know Dexter Gordon. Okay, so. yeah, he's a saxophone player, okay. and man, his stuff is just like I don't know. Like, if I could play any way, I'd love to play like Dexter Gordon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. he, he just like a lot of it was like his quotes. Like he'd put in quotes in his improv, and so like. I feel like he would relate to the audience because a lot of the stuff, like if you don't listen to jazz, some of the quotes you won't get, but he would play like commonly like known quotes, like, you know, ba, ba, da, 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 da. Yeah, and, yeah. and he would play like stuff like that. And like the audience will know that and pick up on it. So I just think that's really cool <laughs> as a you know performer. Yeah. So. Um, already with the philosophical <laughs> style questions, but <laughs> what is jazz? <laughs> oh, man. That's so tough. Like, honestly, I, I mean, I think, you know, anything, I mean, if you want to talk about music, it, there's a lot of music that could be categorized as some type of jazz. Like you have Latin and, you know, there's like funk and, you know, the jazz can encompass a lot of different like feels and grooves mm -hmm. and stuff. But also, I mean, I feel like jazz could be, you know, just like life and having to like kind of go with the flow sometimes and <laughs> you know I sometimes I like look at like I'll watch like improv like comedy improv where they're yeah. improvising you know like through comedy and I'm like man that's exactly like that's jazz, jazz. <laughs> you know and like just day-to-day -day, like stuff can be I don't know I guess improvisation and jazz are kind of like very close together so mm -hmm. a lot of like improv things I relate back to like jazz and you know I mean I don't know for me I think jazz is more than just like music I feel like it's kind of like just how you go about doing daily tasks and like how you look at things and like yeah. perspective and stuff like that. So that's for me at least. <laughs> what, what, what's like a foundational point of jazz? Foundational point. Um, honestly, I feel like uh, there's like, I mean, there's a couple, but like obviously like, you know, the blues and like call and response and definitely like a, like black music, just like in general, I feel mm -hmm. like jazz is definitely black music. And like, I mean, if, you know, if we didn't have like the mixture of culture with like yeah. European harmony and like the rhythms of like Africa and stuff like that, if the, I mean, it, if it, if it wasn't for like, you know, America basically and like New Orleans where all that stuff like yeah. came to meet, I, I think jazz would, you know, it probably wouldn't exist. And <laughs> I don't know, just, like, a foundational thing is definitely rooted in, like, you know, like, the field haulers and, like, you know, the blues and yeah. um, just, like, call and response where, you know, one person would, would call and then the other person would respond with, like, a different, um, like, line, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> what is, what would you show someone that doesn't know anything about jazz and go, like, this is why this is awesome? <laughs> like um, if I had like a recording or something yeah yeah um that's tough I'd probably do like maybe like one of the older recordings like a Count Basie re recording or like Moton Swing by uh Benny Moton it's just like one of like really early classic recordings I mean there's also like Dixieland which is like mm -hmm. you know it kind of was the precursor to like what we know as like the big it was like the precursor to like the big band era yeah and stuff like that and I mean I don't know. I just think like maybe the Count Basie band would be a really good example of like mm -hmm. jazz or what it could be or what it, the idea of jazz. So, <laughs> I don't know. Probably something from the Basie band maybe. Uh, <laughs> and then kind of on the opposite side of that, mm -hmm. what would you show someone to be like, this stuff is bonkers? <laughs> um, probably like something with Michael Brecker or uh, like Robert Glasper, just like some of the contemporary guys today. I mean, 
uh, Chad Lefkowitz Brown. I've really been digging digging his stuff. Um, Jacob Collier is a really good like musician, and Herbie Hancock or you know mm. um, Art Blakey. Just a lot of <laughs> just like the more modern stuff. Miles Davis even would be crazy. I mean, some of his stuff that he did was like really out there and awesome. Stuff gets fast. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Freddie, Hub- Freddie Hubbard's another really good one. His Red Clay album, just like I don't know. There's a lot of out there that's great so. yeah um being in music school what was what sort of woke you up to be like whoa this stuff is like serious business <laughs> man honestly like my first year in college I, I wish i could go back and do it over i mean I, I know a lot of people feel that way about things but like honestly it was probably after i broke up with my first girlfriend <laughs> because like back then like I wasn't practicing as much as I should have been and I I wasn't really taking it seriously like I was just kind of going through the motions and like okay you know I'm a trombone player you know I go to my lesson every week and I I kind of prepare and I, you know I, I pass my you know excerpts that I have to play or whatever but like it's the essence of being a trombone player right and you know <laughs> so like I don't know just when it hit me was like when I saw like some of the musicians that like Oklahoma city has to offer, like Mm. maybe they weren't playing at the jazz lab or anything, but maybe they were just like, you know, playing somewhere. And I was like, man, these people have like so much talent. Like, I feel like they could live like anywhere they wanted, you know, like they could live in New York or LA, but then I'm like, man, like even my teacher, like Jeff Kidwell, like, I mean, he's like a crazy great trombone player and he lives in Oklahoma, you know? And it's like, man, like if, you know, if I'm getting taught by that guy, I should definitely like, you know, take this seriously and not waste my time or his time mm-hmm. or anybody, you know? So that's kind of <laughs> when it was probably my sophomore year of college is when I kind of like got my butt kicked, you know? <laughs> so, um, is there, is there like a good enough level ever? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it depends. Like for me personally, like I'm, I have a really hard time like going back, and listening to myself, which mm-hmm. I, is really important to do because you can critique yourself and like, you know, say, oh, I liked that or, oh, I didn't like that. But like, I don't know, I'm never really satisfied with like my playing and, you know, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I'm like, man, that sounded really good. But then I'm like, oh, I was out of tune or, you know, oh, that could have been like way better <laughs> or that didn't make sense. or So for me personally, I don't, I don't know. I, I hope to just keep improving throughout, you know, my lifetime. Mm. So, <laughs> um, you you've grown leaps and bounds beyond what i got to be as a trombonist uh <laughs> so what what did you discover about your instrument the more that you played it oh man well the more i played the more i discovered man it, like technically like it's a very it's, it doesn't really lend itself to fast or, you know, jazz. <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, we have a slide. And so, like, your technique, like, your tonguing technique and just, like, your your movement, even with, your, like, your wrist or anything, like, everything has to be very precise. And, like, mm-hmm. to be able to play fast or at faster tempos on trombone, your I mean, your technique has to be, like, way above you know maybe like a trumpet player or sax player because they have buttons you know and you're moving through space right exactly (laughs) yeah i mean some sometimes like there's tunes that you know i mean for a select few trombone players it's almost impossible to play just because of the tempo or the technique that's involved like i mean i i have sure my techniques nowhere near where i want it to be you know i mean i can play decently fast but not like some people i'm just like man i yeah yeah. i hope i can get there one day (laughs) so (laughs) Um, is there, since you lean more jazz, do you still like and appreciate the sort of dry quote unquote, like classical side? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I, for me personally, I wish I could be more, you know, I need to start playing classical music more just because like even like trombone or any any classical like trumpet or just horn music like their technique is always like just so clean and like their mm-hmm. tonguing and like and like if i wasn't a trombone player i probably like i keep telling myself man i, I wish i could be like a classical pianist cuz like i love a lot of the classical piano pieces that i hear like i'll listen to i mean i listen to classical piano a ton and i really like appreciate like uh, i think his name's eric satie and like chopin mm-hmm. and um lists and like just I mean, you know, Rachmaninoff, like there's a ton of like classical artists that I, I really admire and like their music is like 
crazy good. And uh, yeah, but with the horn players, like their technique is just like super clean. And uh, it's just like, man, it makes me really want to like practice my classical chops. <laughs> so yeah. Um, <clears throat> what is what is actually impossible on trombone? <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, hey, I don't think there's anything that's not too. Uh, um, I don't know. Impossible. I don't know. I, that's a good question. Maybe just honestly, just like a ten, it's might be like a playing fa- as fast as a saxophone player. There's some like <laughs> fly like, to the bumblebee, but really low. Right. Yeah. And like <laughs> there's like trills. Like you know, I mean, we, tr- trombones can trill, and trilling you can do on trombone. But like some of the sounds like a saxophone can get like you know we can't get or but it's vice versa too like there's stuff that we can do on a trombone that no other instrument can do you know like Cause a we have, very simple glissando yeah exactly <laughs> so you know I mean I think it just kind of varies with instruments but you know I I really like I'm glad I'm a trombone player I guess yeah yeah, yeah. so well speaking of the very simple glissando what's the most fun to do on trombone. Oh man, for I don't know for beginners, I really like doing. I mean, I I don't know. I teach a couple students, and you know, it's fun to do like race car sounds with the slide, <laughs> or like, you know, you can do like um, like a foghorn thing, like from SpongeBob, like this alarm clock thing. <laughs> I mean, there's like a lot of different effects you can do. There's also an effect you can do where if you take the slide off and cup your your hand and your thumb over the slide and then pull the slide out really fast. It makes like a popping noise. It's really bad probably for the slide, but it's really fun. I don't know. (laughs) So, yeah. Well, I mean, trombone players are kind of known for being goofballs. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Low brass for sure. Why? (laughs) I don't know. I I don't know why. Maybe it's just because the slide, when you're like a little kid, the slide seems kind of silly. And if you're like inclined to like a silly thing that, you know, maybe that's your personality. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, because each, each instrument or yeah. class of instruments right. has its own yeah. behavioral quirks, it yeah, seems. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's very true. Um, and for some reason, it it just remains true. Like, we shouldn't, you know, embrace stereotypes necessarily. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's like it happens all the time. Yeah, it does. Because yeah. as a low brass player... <laughs> I mean, I was probably one of the more serious low brass players, but even still, like, yeah, yeah for sure. I don't know why that is. That's weird, but it, it, it does, you're right. It is that does happen and occur. It's weird. I don't know. Does it still extend past, like, yeah? I think are are the trombone teachers in the jazz program yeah. still the silly ones? Oh yeah, the, definitely. Yeah, I, it's weird. Yeah, even like on a professional level, you know, the trumpet players are always like kind of uptight and like you know think highly of themselves and i mean not every trumpet player right, right. but you know you know that's always like the running yeah, joke the... and you know <laughs> so yeah it still holds true i don't know it's weird <laughs> um what has been your favorite piece that you've played uh oh, throughout your studies uh, my favorite so like in school or yeah, like yeah. Uh, okay or just at all really man mm-hmm. i don't know it's going to be hard to I might not even remember the name of it, but I really like in high school. I know I'm talking about high school, but I really liked uh, when I was in full orchestra in high school, we did a piece called uh, Firebird and it was a classical mm-hmm. piece. And that was really awesome. I don't know why it might have been like the band or what, but I don't know. I got a really nice feeling from that. And then in in college, I mean, there were just a ton like I mean, there were a ton of songs that made me feel that way. I mean, most most of them were like swing, swing songs, like medium tempo Mm-hmm. Like a, a bunch of like bassy stuff is like always makes, I don't know. I just really like medium swing tunes, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Just some of the bassy stuff, I guess. Um, I don't know. There's like this one tune called bassy straight ahead, which was like awesome. I don't know. Moat and swing was another one that I really loved. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Every, every time I play, it's kind of like, I mean, it's kind of like that for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously Jazz and like classical music isn't the only stuff mm-hmm. that you listen to. Right. So, what are some of your influences and what are you into in the, I guess, contemporary world? Cool. Okay. So, yeah, honestly, I really, I like listening to like all kinds of music. And whenever I listen to music, even if it's like country or whatever, I try to like find something that I can appreciate in the song, even if I might not necessarily like like anything that's on the song i'll try and find something like oh okay you know i can kind of like dig that i guess you know or i don't know but i was really lucky this summer like last summer i was able to 
uh, actually hook up with this guy named Adam Ledbetter, and yeah, I was in. Uh, oh my I, gosh! Yeah, I know he's like a crazy guy. Like I don't. He lives in Oklahoma City, you know, and <laughs> I got to be in his like hip hop band, and I love like hip hop. I've always like really enjoyed that. You know, I guess if you genre, you know, I really like just like the. It's very simplistic, but at the same time, it's like super. It can be really complex, and yeah, I don't know. Just like a simple beat can like. You know the ryth- the rhythmic aspect of it, I guess, is really where I like it. And um, I got to play in his hip hop band, anyways, and like it was just like super mind blowing. And like every time we went to, I had a rehearsal with Adam. I got to like learn something new, and I mean, yeah. it was super like insightful. And I just like I'm super appreciative of getting to play with him because yeah. and his band, and, like everybody in the band was like that too. They were awesome. All of them yeah. were great. So it was uh, cool. that man <laughs> on piano is. Yeah nuts yeah i actually <laughs> he, he i got him to play on my senior recital somehow so i was like <laughs> like when i when he agreed i was like oh my gosh yes <laughs> that's so cool so yeah. um so in involving rap uh mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of i don't know competition about who who the goat is oh yeah so to you <laughs> Who's who's the greatest oh, of all time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I don't know. I that's a hard, really hard question. I think uh, this is really cliche, but I mean, I really like you know Biggie Smalls and like Tupac is great too. I I think I I kind of tend to like people with lower voices. Like I don't know, hmm. like you know Biggie Smalls, his voice was more deep, and I don't know for some reason I, I just really. I don't know. I just really like that sound of like the deeper voice, but yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a ton of like, I mean, you know, rappers that I like really like, and I I don't know if I mean, you know, I like I really like Chance the Rapper, for example, or Tyler the Creator, or Danny Brown, or you know, some of the older school people are great too, like um, Raquan and like just uh, ODB or you know Wu Tang <laughs> Clan and yeah, just yeah. all those people. I mean, I I can appreciate every like each each thing that they've done. And, you know, I feel like even the older guys, they've, you know, they, they've helped make it what it is today, you know? So, and like Kanye West and like, you know, Kanye West is another great example. Like that guy, I mean, I I mean, I know some people don't like him, but I feel like he just, what he's done for like that, you know, music in general is like, I mean, I feel like he's like almost a genius in some ways, but I mean, that's just my opinion. So. Yeah. Well, the, that brings up a great thought too, which is do you, do you separate the art from the artist? Um, that's a good question. I don't, sometimes I do. Like I can, I can, I can understand why people might do that. But at the same time, like, I feel like they wouldn't be able to make the art that they, they do if they weren't who they are. Yeah. You know? So I, I don't know. Probably not for me. I, I would more just associate it with who they are as a person. And, you know, that's kind of how they got, their art to be how it is because of who they are so, right i don't know well can you can you still listen to college dropout <laughs> but also listen to like life of pablo oh, and yeah. think yeah yeah the same and feel the same about it <laughs> uh, yeah um i don't know i for, for me another thing i f- think like in terms of that question i feel like you know maybe he was obviously at a different point in his life you know yeah, so yeah. like you know, people go through experiences and, you know, maybe they're, when they're younger, they have a different kind of sound. And even like in jazz, like there's, you know, you listen to early recordings of um, yeah, artists yeah. and, you know, they're, maybe they, you know, they still sound good, but then when they're in their later or they're, you know, near death or something, they sound completely different. And yeah, I think it has a lot to do with just like how they experience life or like, you know, if they have like a traumatic event or, you know, just stuff like that. I think that really influences how they make their music or their art, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, again, with the big broad questions, um, what makes music important? Um, oh man, there's a lot of things that make music important. I think the main thing that makes music important is that it can be like, everyone can connect with it. No matter like if you're from a different country or if you're from, you know, you don't speak the same language or, you know, anywhere you go in the world, I feel like every culture kind of has their own, you know, sounds mm-hmm. or music. And I mean, there's like a lot of like uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of like um, like Indian music, mm-hmm. and I, that's really cool. I mean, they they have a whole system where they do like this. 
I think the, it's like a tabla the, pattern. Yeah, the conical system. Yeah, I think. yeah, that stuff's like crazy. And yeah. like, I can definitely appreciate it just because, like, I mean, I don't know. Another thing, like, that's not bothered me, but like a lot of times people will say, like, oh man, they're just so talented. Like, look at them. Like, you know, mm. they they're so they can do it. And it's like, man, those people like they put in like a ton of hard work. And yeah, like yeah. W- just with anything, like with anything that you do in life. I mean. I mean, sometimes people are like more, you know, geared towards something and maybe they're more naturally talented, but they definitely, I mean, to get where you're a professional, you definitely have to put in like hard work with yeah. anything. And, you know, I just back to your question, like music, I think is just so important just to like connect with just like human beings in general. It's just very, it's a very basic yeah. connection, I guess. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> What advice do you have for musicians that are starting out or even um, venturing out into the world um well i i guess like my advice would just be like don't be afraid and you know do like if you have an idea you know go go for it you know and definitely practice you know practice what you want to do like if you want to do like more like technic you know technology like if you want to do like a soundboard or something and like mm. samples then you know definitely like make a beat a day or something you know like yeah challenge yourself to like get into like a routine and like a practice uh, like period or just like a schedule basically and you know some people like if you and oh yeah put yourself out there too like you know make people you know make people aware that you're doing music or that you want to do something with it and you know maybe you'll get like you know maybe you'll get a a couple hits or maybe you won't but I mean I feel like ultimately it should just be something that if like you want to do like you don't feel like you have to do it i don't know yeah yeah <laughs> so <laughs> no i really like that okay. <laughs> uh without any good transition mm-hmm. uh let's go to spirituality and such okay sure yeah um what is the role of spirituality or religion in your life personally for me i, I don't know I, honestly i don't i don't go to church or anything i'm not like a regular church goer mm-hmm. and you know just like for me, I was, I guess my parents, they're, they're Christian. Um, I, I don't know if I'd consider myself Christian. I, I'm more, I don't think I'm like Christian at all, really. But I do think that like for me, I think music helps me spiritually. And I think like I'm not going to bash somebody if like Christianity helps them or, you know, whatever religion even. Like I, I mm-hmm. definitely can appreciate like different religions and like I can see how you know, certain religions help other people and like their beliefs, you know, if, you know, if that's what, if that, if that helps them, you know, then that's great, you know, but I, as long as it's not like harming anybody else, then I'm, you know, I'm not going to like bash somebody for what they believe in. (laughs) But yeah, just for me, I I don't, I don't know, spiritually, like I think music does it for me. Like, I mean, I can listen to like a recording and I'm like, man, this is like, you know, I actually feel something. And like, sometimes like I'm around certain people, like there's this guy I just had a lesson with. His name's like Jeremy Thomas, and he's like a really good organist. organist. And I, mm-hmm. he's like Christian, and I think he was going to be a preacher. And, you know, like when I had my lesson with him, I was like, man, like, you know, I'm like actually feel like he made me feel something like spiritually. And I was like, yeah. man, this is awesome. Like there's just certain people that you can be around that make you feel like spirituality, I guess. And yeah, yeah. so I'm not necessarily like religious, but I guess that's for me, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what it is. Music is the yeah. is the source in right. a way. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what is your definition of God? Hmm. I think like anything that has to do with helping each other, like being, uh, just helping out like humanity. Like if you feel like, I mean, like whenever I see somebody even like on a street corner or something, I'll try and help them. If if it's not, if like a lot of times I don't carry cash, but if I do have like some cash, I'll give them cash. Or like sometimes if I'm by like a restaurant, that's like a quick fast food restaurant, I'll like go through and like get them food and give it to them. And I don't know, like, I just try and think about if I was in, like, other people's shoes and if I was in, like, a situation that, like, needed help, I would want someone to do that for me, you know? So, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of where God is. And especially, like, in music, too. Like, if I hear something that's, like, I don't know, if it registers with me personally, I'm like, man, that's, like, you know, that's spiritual for me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, (laughs) Um, A sort of harder uh, thing to word uh is free will an illusion um how for free will i feel like maybe if you're talking about in like a like a government sense like if you 
maybe not just the person them, themselves, but like an entity of people or like a company. Maybe, maybe free will, like, you know, you can't do whatever you want as like a group of people or like an entity. Sure. But, but like as like a, like an individual, I feel like you kind of have free will based on like what you decide to do throughout the day. Mm. I, you know, I don't know. That's a hard question. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to say like, oh, yeah, the government controls everything. <laughs> I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. But I definitely do think like mm. there's a group of people that have more control over, you know, they they can they're at they have an advantageous, you know, view of the world and whatever, you know, if they want something done, then they can definitely get it done you know, <laughs> because they have the power to do that. But I don't know. So. Um, well, on that, like, how, how does power work for you? And do you think that there's like a unfairness of power? (laughs) Um, I mean... I yeah definitely I think there's an unfairness of power definitely even just with like the racial stuff like you know mm. Black Lives Matter and stuff like that like I mean you know I'm I was just born a white guy so like <laughs> I mean I didn't get a choice or anything but like I definitely can see like the disadvantages of being like a minority or like I've been in situations where like I'm the minority and it's like whoa this is what it feels like all the time for some people you know mm. and it's like man like that's I, it's definitely super unfair and like I don't know. It's, it's hard to like, you know, I'm just, I'm white. So I, I, you know, I don't, I can't say I totally understand, but like, I can definitely see how like some people, especially minorities, like, you know, are treated unfairly or they, they don't have the power to, you know, not be like, um, what is it like criminal or what, what, I don't know what the word is called. Due process or. Yeah. Just like (laughs) uh, profiled. Yeah. Like like racial profiling Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you know, because that that doesn't happen as much, like, or at all to white people, you know? (laughs) So, like, I I definitely, like, I guess can empathize and, like, I I, I try and understand. Mm. But, yeah, like, that's something that, you know, irritates me or bugs me that, like, the world is like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Um, Do you, this is a weird thing to ask, but, like, do you feel, like, you have white guilt? <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I haven't read, I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly. I mean, I probably, I feel like sometimes like I feel guilty because I'm white, but like at the same time, like, I don't know how I can, you know, I can't change that. So, right. you know, but yeah, it's like, man, like if I was a different race, I would definitely like, I could totally see how it would just be really unfair. And like how a lot of white people don't even realize Mm-hmm. that they have like a privilege or they have like, you know, they have like different opportunities or better opportunities just because they're, you know, they were born white or they grew up, you know, I mean, just like the dynamic of like a household could be different. I mean, mm-hmm. but that n- doesn't necessarily have to do with race, but it could. You right, know? right. It definitely could. So. Well, and and this <laughs> is the thing is that I don't think it's me, but yeah. I don't think you should feel white guilt. And oh, so that's yeah. the. Yeah, yeah. That's more of why I was interested in the question. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, how do we reduce the division that has been sort of permeating our culture, especially mm. in America? That's a good question. You know, I don't know. I think I feel like there's a lot of like countries that, you know, they don't deal with it as much, especially like in Europe. And I mean, I don't. I don't have the answers exactly, but like I might look at like the other other countries again. But you know, America, their hit America's history is different than those mm. you know those countries' history. So, you know, I don't know the American history just with like slavery and all that. I you know I feel like that definitely that that was the division and just like just all the different cultures that came in. You know, for America, like when America was, you know, building, being built and becoming a, you know, mm. a power. And I don't know, to change it, I just feel like it's very, like, there's like very deep roots, I guess. But like just being more open with people and just like, you know, everybody is a human being and like mm-hmm. just, you know, being open to the idea that, 
you know, just because somebody has different experiences doesn't, and maybe they have a different skin color, that doesn't mean, you know, they're any different. Maybe, you know, I try and look at it like everybody knows something that I, everybody I meet knows something that I don't. And Mm -hmm. so like, even if they, I can't really relate to them, they definitely know something that I don't know. And, you know, I'm trying to, I don't know, I try to look like life as like a learning process just through the Mm -hmm. whole way. So I like, if they can teach me something that I don't know, then yeah, I definitely want to like get to know them or like try and learn something from them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, How does music help in that sense? (laughs) I think music can help just like culturally, like I was saying, like jazz is kind of like considered black music or it is black music. And like, I think it helps bring cultures together and it's like something you can kind of share amongst other musicians of different, like even if the musicians are different, like races or colors or, you know, whatever you can, you can totally just like, um, I don't know, like veg out or meditate with the same person. Like you can communicate in a different way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With music. And so it helps because I think, I feel like genres, like sometimes like genres, I don't, I don't necessarily agree that like music should have genres. I mean, I know right. there are music genres, but like if if there weren't any genres in music, I feel like it would kind of be separated by like culture and like, you mm-hmm. know, like hip hop and rap is considered more black in culture. And like, you know, there's a lot of white rappers or there's a lot of, you know, you yeah, know there's yeah. a lot of rappers that aren't uh, black. And I feel like that's kind of like, um, maybe not appropriating, but just like that, that culture crossover is like where communication happens and like where people start realizing like kind of with Elvis even like, you yeah. know, he was like a crossover and like people, people that wouldn't listen to the music, you know, necessarily if Elvis was black, they start listening to it because yeah. he's white and, you know? And so I feel like maybe even not so much like the newer generations, but like for older generations, I feel like that was like really important because like music would, there would be crossovers and they would, li- you know, if they weren't into like R and B, you know, there were there was an R and B artist that was white, and they would listen to him because you know they were white, or you know what I mean, like yeah, yeah. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> and I mean, it does, it does suck that like yeah. <laughs> is is there a good way to bridge that without sort of you know running into the appropriation thing? Like, yeah. is there? I mean. Eminem has gotten to the point to where it it like doesn't matter (laughs) that he's white. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know if I have an answer for that just because I'm not like super versed and I, I don't, I need to read more, but you know, I don't know exactly. I mean, that's a good question. I think, I feel like it should be more natural than anything. Like if, if you're trying to like put on an act and you're not being yourself or, you know, then, if it's not like genuine, then I feel like that's where you would have problems, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, what are you optimistic about for our future? In general or with like music or just in general? Uh, well, if it goes into music, please do. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, I'm optimistic for especially like people that are, I don't know, not, I don't want to say woke, but like people that like, (laughs) you know, they like read the news or they listen. And I I definitely like people that just question stuff like in general, Mm -hmm. like, cause there's a lot of people, especially like older generations. And I don't know, I'm not trying to harp on them because I know there's people of their age that like read, but like for my (laughs) grandparents, my grandparents, for example, they're like prime example. Like they'll, I don't know, they'll like read something and then they'll like immediately think, oh my gosh, this has to be true. Like, yeah, I read it on the Internet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or like I read it somewhere. And like, I don't know, like there's a lot of people that that really irritates me when they don't like check themselves. Like if if you see something, even like for me, like I'll do it, too. Like if I see something, I definitely have to like research it. And like I'm like, oh, is that really true? Like, did I really read that? Or is like, is that just like not did somebody just write that? You know, <laughs> it's just I try to like question everything and get second opinions and like mm-hmm. make sure that, you know, I'm reading facts or that I'm like, this is a fact or that this did happen. And like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm optimistic because I feel like more people are starting to like question each other and like try and understand each other and try and like, you know, just be genuine people, I guess. Not not try to double cross or, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. 
Um, I have three more questions. Okay. Cool. Uh, what makes you happy? Um, well, I want to say music, but I mean, you know, besides music, um, something that makes me happy. I really like food. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I can definitely, you know, appreciate food. Definitely, even like different like ethnic foods. Like, I'll definitely try any kind of ethnic food because mm-hmm. it's like, man. Like I've I have some friends that are like Persian and mm-hmm. I got to like eat dinner with them and I just think it's really interesting seeing like and it, it makes you happy seeing like different um traditions or like cultures yeah, yeah. and like how they handle the food and how, like what they do like sometimes they'll pray or sometimes you know people just have different like routines that they do depending mm-hmm. on where they're from or what, just in general I think that I can definitely I it just it makes me appreciate humanity I guess because yeah yeah it's just really cool or beautiful to see how people deal with a daily thing yeah and i don't know they make it special i guess and that i don't know that makes me happy (laughs) yeah it's great (laughs) yeah um what advice do you have for people in general (laughs) um my advice in general would be um maybe don't jump to conclusions so quickly and like if something makes you upset or angry maybe or if you can't understand something maybe try and put yourself in someone else's perspective or, Mm. you know, maybe that you don't have the same experiences as them, but try and like understand where they're coming from or I don't know, just trying be trying to be more civil with each other and not like, you know, especially like on social media, like Facebook, (laughs) I try to stay away from it just because like all the man, people like argue so much on Facebook. It's just horrible. Like, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I read, I like, I'll read some arguments and I'm just like, man, if they were, Face to face, like yeah, yeah. It, you know, people. I feel like people forget that there's other people behind, mm-hmm. you know, the screen of a computer. I don't know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My advice would just be to be nicer, I guess, or be more civil. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, cake or pie? Hmm. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> Does cheesecake count? Uh, <laughs> depends what you classify it as. Okay. Well. I- I'm going to go with pie. I'm going to go with pie. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with pie. <laughs> See, and that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> I know I've gone over this repeatedly on the podcast, but is cheesecake pie? I don't know. I, that's a good <laughs> question. I don't know. Because <laughs> it has graham cracker crust. Yeah. And it's like solid. There's no yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like cake right. in it. Yeah. So it might as well just be pie. <laughs> I'm just going to say cheesecake. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Tyler, thank you for doing this with me. Oh, yeah. No, thanks for asking me to do it. I This is awesome. Like, <laughs> this is like, really cool. So thank you. Um, where can we find you and your things? Um, if you have things to plug. <laughs> uh, I don't really, I mean, my Instagram is Tyler underscore Thomas underscore IG. And then my Facebook, I think my Facebook is... Uh, you know, facebook.com slash Def Jam Poet. And, you know, that's mm-hmm. my Facebook. Um, I have a YouTube channel that I have, like, some uploads on. But, that, I mean, I don't even remember what that YouTube channel <laughs> if, you, if you Google, I mean, if you YouTube Tyler Thomas Trombone, there'll be some stuff on there. But, I mean, yeah. yeah. yeah so. It's really difficult having the name Tyler Thomas oh, yeah. for PR sake. Yeah. Cause <laughs> there's a, I think there's actually a rapper named Tyler Thomas. When I, I've Googled myself and there's like a, I don't know how popular he is, but he's definitely, he's popular enough to come up in my Google feed. So right, right. his name's Tyler Thomas too. So it's like, ah, it's a very <laughs> common, both very common names. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> as, as I feel kind of dumb saying this, but like earlier, whenever you were like, yeah, I don't understand what it's like to be like a, a brown person or a minority or right, something. Or right. like, but it's fine. Your name is Tyler <laughs> Thomas, and that's really inconvenient. <laughs> it is, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> Especially being a musician and having stuff to play or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Again, thank you for doing this with me. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm Santiago Ramones. I'm Tyler Thomas. You can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I have music on there. You can download or pay for my demo, Songs with Words. And you can find all of my other music through there, but you can also find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, on Stitcher, on Google Play, and probably other places that I don't remember about right now. 
I always end my podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong.